Hi there. Today we're solving a coding problem in Haskell, which is a strongly and statically typed general purpose functional programming language. The problem we're solving is the run length encoding and decoding problem. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. Let's dig in. So our problem description is as such. The run length encoding algorithm is a simple lossless data compression algorithm. The basic idea is to reduce sequences of the same data, called a run, to a count and the data value of the run. Our directive is to implement run length encoding and decoding for strings. We have some input constraints. Unencoded input strings do not have digits. Unencoded input strings will only have characters from A to Z lowercase and A to Z uppercase. And encoded input strings are always going to be valid. So here are some examples of inputs and the outputs that we will get. One thing to note about the run length encoding algorithm is how simplistic it is. For example, here we have uh, a string where each letter only occurs once. And because of that, with the algorithm, we'll see that we end up expanding the string instead of compressing it. We won't be handling this case of, of making an algorithm that will not expand given uh, this special uh, input case. But that could be something we do in an upcoming bonus, bonus video to follow up on this. So let's begin with uh, writing down the type signatures of our or functions that we, will, that we will use to solve this problem. So I'm going to say, let's call this run length encode. And it's going to take a string and it's going to output a string. So run length encode, and we will give that undefined and let that sit for now. And we're also going to need our opposite case where we decode. So with our run length encode, it's going to take our string. Both of them will take our string. Let's hop over into the repo to see how we would encode a, a string. So the first thing that comes to mind is that we would need a really useful function from the list module. And that function would be the group function. So import data.list and let us define an example string. So let this be AA, BB, CCC. And so we can say group S and we'll get this kind of output. So all the runs have been grouped together. Once we have grouped our, once we have our runs, then we need to map over each run and compress that run. So we can map over this with a function that will take a group and it will take the head of the group and that will be our, our, the representation of what we have compressed. And then we will also need to get the count of the number of characters in our group. So we will need to get the length of the group. And since we are appending strings, we will need to turn that length into a string. So if I map show length, then we have our compressed runs. And to 
bring that all back together into a single string, then we will need to concat our result. And that is how we would encode our string, run length encode our string. So let's bring that over here. So we said we would import data.list. Later on, to really solve this problem, we're going to make use of a number, a few other uh, modules. So I'm going to import this as qualified as list, just to be clear about uh, where each function is coming from. So list.group s and once we have our group then we want to map a function and I'm going to create a helper function called compress run which takes a string and outputs a string and it will be exactly what we typed in the in the repo. So it takes a group and we will get the length of the group and we will add that to the head of the group. And so we can say that we will map over each group and compress the run can make this a function and we can ooh and we can concat this and make this a point free function and there we have it this is how we would run length encode a string Let's test this out in the REPL. So we can load our file and we can say run length encode. Before we do that, let's get the string and then do run length encode our string. And there we have our encoded string. Now, the next thing that we want to do is to be able to decode our encoded string. And for that, we need some way of splitting up our encoded string into its compressed runs and then expanding those, uh, those, those compressed runs and putting it all back together. So if we talk about this at a high level, we can begin writing this as we want to map over our compressed runs. We want to expand our compressed runs. So given that we have some compressed runs, we want to map our decompress run function over that and then we'll want to bring it all together but we don't have a decompress run function and we don't have a, a set of compressed runs so let's begin by defining those so first we can start off with our decompress run function which will take a string and output a string decompress run and it's going to take a compressed run and what are we going to do with the compressed run well our compressed run is going to look something let's say it got compressed like this so our compressed run is going to grab the last of the compressed run 
and that's going to be a parameter to our replicate function which is a really handy function for just uh, taking a number and uh, 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 an item and building a list of uh, that input number size with all those with all those items in there so how do we get this 10 out of this 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 uh, compressed run string that we will have so one thing we can do is to take the init of the compressed run and then we can read it and turn it into a number so i want to test this in the repl so i am going to make sure that this will type check and let's hop over to the repl reload and then do decompress run and we will give it say 4a there we go and let's say that we give it 10a there we go so now we need to get our compressed runs so let's jump into the repl to see how we can build a list of compressed runs from our encoded input string. What we want is to go from an encoded input string that looks something like this, a 10 for B, to something that looks like this. And in order to do that, the data.list.split module and the data.car module will be useful. So we can import data.list.split and we can import data.car and let us define our encoded input string so 10a for b and given the example i gave before about the how we want our output to to look it means that we need to split the string in some way and in order to do that we could split on each character that we encounter. Character meaning uh, a letter, an, alpha, an alphanumeric letter. So if we do split, which takes a splitter and our input string, then we can split when we find a character. But this isn't exactly what we want we would like for our delimiters which are the a and the b to be a part of the numeric chunk so we need to get a to join to 10 and b to join to 4 and we can do that by keeping the delims to the right and so we end up with this but we want to get rid of this final blank uh, character. And so we can drop final blank. And that's how we will get our compressed runs. So if we hop back over here and we import qualified data dot list dot split as split and grab our import qualified data dot car as car then we can start 
to build our compressed runs from our encoded input string. And this should be all that we need. So let's test this out in the REPL. So if we reload, then we should be able to run length encode a string. So a one, two, three, one, two, three, four. We get our encoded string. And then we should be able to decode that string as well. And there we go. We have the string that we started with. So this is the solution to the run length encoding and decoding problem where we had to build a run length encoder and a run length decoder. The link to the code will be in the description. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know what you think of the solution in the comments or how you would go about solving it. Follow me on Twitter and on Medium at Onel Harrison if you'd like to see my content on those channels. Until next time, peace.